Are there some finishing moves that should only be used by heels and others reserved just for baby faces? We're taking an old wrestling chestnut and cracking it wide open next until we make it. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I have been very fortunate because I've worked in front of the cameras as a professional wrestler, referee, ring announcer, and commentator too. And I've also had the opportunity to work behind the scenes in wrestling as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant, and a bunch of other gigs as well. And I bring the sum total of all these experiences that I have had across several decades now, and I serve it up to you right here until we make it. If you're down with that, then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. Today, I want to crack open an old piece of wrestling's conventional wisdom. An old chestnut, if you will. And this came up in a conversation I was having with a couple fellow veterans, many of whom were bemoaning the fact that they feel like everything going on in wrestling right now is bad, or it's wrong, or it's killing the business. And a lot of times, when these conversations take a turn like that, what the people complaining are really saying is, wrestling is not being made the way it was when I loved it best. It has evolved, it has changed, it has morphed into something else, which I enjoy less, but that's coming out by me saying, it's bad, it's wrong, the business is dying. That's not true. Pro wrestling is not dying. There are definitely some metrics out there if you take a close look, which would indicate wrestling has actually never been stronger as a business. And that's a different video for another time. What I want to get into today is this bit, which I haven't heard in at least 10 years, that traditionally, baby faces in wrestling have impact finishers, and heels in wrestling have submission holds as their finishers. So why has this become a tenant? When was this ever an actual guideline? Is there any merit to this piece of conventional wisdom? So, to properly dissect this tenet of pro wrestling, let's look at the thought process behind it. Why would baby faces have impact moves as their finishers while heels have submission holds as theirs? Well, it's because if a babyface can suddenly hit their finishing move and then go back to selling, this allows the drama to rise. And in the case of a submission hold for a heel, it allows the babyface to sell their pain out to the audience as they fade toward submission. So I understand some of the underlying psychology there, but does this really hold up to much examination? Well, if you consider the fact that Lou Fez's run as the babyface NWA champion often saw him winning matches with the STF, which is a submission hold, not an impact move, or Bruno San Martino's unimpeachable run as the top babyface of the WWF often saw him winning matches with a bear hug or the Canadian backbreaker, both of which are submission holds, not impact moves, to say nothing of the fact that all of the Von Erich brothers during the heyday of world class down in Texas all used the Iron Claw hold as their finisher, or the fact that Bret Hart's babyface run as WWF champion is synonymous with the sharpshooter, similar to how Sting's babyface run with the WCW championship is tied to his use of the Scorpion Deathlock. Or think about Kurt Angle using the ankle lock as a babyface, Daniel Bryan using the label lock. There are countless examples of babyfaces using submission holds. This does not hold up to even mild scrutiny. But does that mean that it has no merit? That there's no value in this idea? Well, hang on a second. There is something valuable here. Even if this wrestling tenet is less of a rule or guideline and more of an interesting idea, there's something worthwhile. And I think we can extract five really important points from this. Before we explore those, I need your help. My goal for this year is to reach 100 patrons over on my Patreon page. So if keeping Till We Make It a weekly YouTube channel is important to you, please support the work I've been doing for the last four years. Follow the link down below in the descriptus and join our community over on Patreon for as little as five US dollars a month. If you got a PayPal or a credit card, you can be part of our community today and we'd love to have you. Thanks. So. 
Let's consider for a moment what we can extract from this idea of baby faces having impact finishers and heels having submission holds as their finishers and look at it in terms of the modern context. We can't consider this as if we are wrestlers in the territory era nor wrestlers of the cable TV era. We have to look at it with today's eyes. And that means considering it in the context of the social media era of wrestling, the one we're in right now. So let's extract the valuable parts of this idea, shall we? Number one, a baby face having an impact finisher that they can hit from a variety of angles or in a variety of situations and then go right back to selling, that's a great idea. And finishers just like that can absolutely help contribute to climactic finishes of matches. I think that's part of why moves like the RKO and the spear have become not just so popular, but so dependable as finishing moves over the last 20 years. And second, heels using a submission hold that allows for their baby face to sell out their pain as they fade towards submission. Think about holds like the figure four leg lock or the cobra clutch. Those are great too, they serve an obvious purpose. I'm not here to argue against either of these as ideas. However, there's some important considerations we cannot ignore. And this next part is really powerful, so listen carefully. Number one, wrestlers from previous eras could have never predicted that everyone would now be walking around with a 4K camera in their pockets, which has become a reality since the smartphone revolution began. And moves which never would have gotten over, never would have resonated with an audience back in 1979, now have the ability to get over thanks to upgrades in videography, production, and more focused commentary, which allows all wrestlers to do more nuanced work than ever before. Number two is a really powerful one. It's as simple as this, equity changes. The equity certain wrestling moves have can change. The moonsault gets far less of a reaction today than it did back in 1982. The DDT will not play as a finishing move now like it did back in 1993. The super kick sure doesn't get the same type of reaction from a live audience that it used to get back in 2003. Equity can change. And a babyface choosing an impact move like a DDT or like a super kick is going to have an uphill battle to fight if they're trying to build equity into a move that has already lost so much of what was built into it. Number three addresses the sea change which is happening in wrestling right now. And it's only going to be accelerated over the next two to three years. So take a look at what's been happening at the corporate level of wrestling. I'm talking about, for example, the WWE, who have put more and more of their dollars and resources into acquiring college athletes as part of their next in line, the NIL program. Now, there is no doubt they have recently acquired some phenomenal athletes. But are these athletes great performers? Do they know how to connect with an audience? Can they sell like a baby face? Here's why I bring that up. If we just take as a hard and fast rule the idea that all heels should have submission holds as their finishing moves, is there a generation of wrestlers coming up who understand that the bread and butter of an emotional connection is down to their ability to sell their pain to the audience? I think we might end up with a generation of wrestlers coming right around the corner who will all be tremendous, mind-blowing athletes, but who may not be able to sell a hold to get it over in front of any kind of audience. And while the idea that heels should have submission holds as their finishers is a great idea, it certainly doesn't work in all contexts, like the one that's coming right over wrestling's horizon now. If you learned something from today's video, won't you please leave me a like a palooza down below. And then click on the video appearing on screen right now. It's going to take you to a playlist all about finishing moves. Also appearing on screen is a roll call of all my awesome patrons. It is only thanks to the support of these awesome people that I'm able to keep till we make it a weekly YouTube channel. Thanks, gang.